Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are going to be talking about our next tropical cyclone. I know this is crazy, it's been a while, but we have one to talk about. And it actually has a 60% chance of developing within the next 48 hours. So this is a quite imminent threat. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below to support the channel. Now for today's comment of the day, you can wait to answer this until the end of the video if you would like, but I would like to know what your thoughts are on this storm. Do you think that this one will end up being nothing? Will it fizzle out? Will it become a tropical depression or a tropical storm or even worse? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video and we're taking a look at our two day graphical tropical weather outlook and as you can see a 60% chance within the next 48 hours, which is a quite high chance, I would say moderate to high chance there that this one is going to become a tropical depression at least, and possibly even a tropical storm, though we're more confident in tropical depression at this point. And this storm is going to face some challenges coming up, and I'm gonna talk about that throughout this video. This one does not have a clear path of development. This one has a lot of question marks and things that could really hinder this one's development. So there is a lot of question marks moving forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and talk about the five day graphical tropical weather outlook, which is going to be basically the same map except for five days instead of two. So here we are taking a look at that five day graphical tropical weather outlook and as you can see it has a 60% chance over the next five days as well and you can see the general direction this one's going to head in and if you kept up with a lot of our tropical weather outlooks this year you would know that Gonzalo and also Isaias took basically the same track so this has been a trend lately uh, for storms to start a little bit more south in our main development region and kind of move in a more northwesterly direction or mostly westerly direction. So that's the path that this one looks to take possibly, but again, it is going to run into challenges after this point, and we're going to talk all about that coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about the shear, the dry air, but we're also going to talk about some things that could help this one develop, and it's just going to raise more and more question marks. I can already tell that this one's going to be the next, next storm that we're going to make multiple, multiple videos about, which is to be expected. Obviously, these storms are a major deal. These can create major problems, so it is usually the most important thing going on in the world uh, when we do have tropical weather going on any major cyclones in the Atlantic or anywhere else that is but we cover the Atlantic mostly obviously because we cover the United States all right now what we are going to do is we're going to move on and talk about those challenges this one could face we're going to talk about the shear the dry air and then we're going to start getting into some of the sea surface temperatures and talk about uh, some of the things this one could run into that could be problems but also things that could help it develop and then we're going to start talking about spaghetti models things of that nature All right, but here we are taking a look at the shear first things first. Basically, all you need to know about this map is green areas are favorable, according to shear at least. Uh, yellow areas, which are quite hard to come by here, there's a few yellow areas, are pretty neutral for development. But the red areas are unfavorable, and these are areas that eat up storms, basically. Our storm is that little white dot there on the very bottom right-hand corner there. It's in a green area now, so if it is going to develop, it needs to do a lot of that very shortly because it's going to enter those red areas no matter what. Again, it's heading north, northwestward, and as you can see, uh, there's tons of reds in that direction. So it is going to run into some of these red areas either way uh, at some point, which is a question mark because a lot of storms head through these red areas and they get eaten up a little bit, but they actually do end up surviving these uh, terrible conditions for development, so it's going to raise more questions than it does answers. Here's our dry air. I mean, basically, if it's not shaded by a color, if you just see blue, you're just seeing water, and that means there's not a lot of dry air. The yellows, reds, and even pinks indicates more and more dry air. Yellows, not too major as far as dry air. Most storms can do just fine if they are heading through these yellows or orange areas. It's the reds and the pinks that will certainly destroy a storm. Uh, and this one's going to head, again, westward, northwestward. It's going to run into some of these oranges around the same time it's dealing with shear. So that is a lot for one storm to handle. Uh, and this creates a lot of question marks, like I said before. Really, if a storm runs into a lot of shear and a lot of dry air, the odds are really lowering. And this one is does have some more moist air, some less dry air it's moving through right now. Even though there is some dry air getting to it, uh, but not a ton. 
All right, this one does have a chance to get past this, uh, but it's that second area that's kind of a further west, further north than it is right now. That's the major concern and the major question mark of if this one's even going to be able to uh, get through this in one piece. Now, there's a good chance that the shear and the dry air are going to do their work and completely dissipate this storm before it has any chance of interacting with the United States, uh, let alone anywhere in the Caribbean either. So, Again, I'm going to need to make multiple videos of this one because we're going to have a lot more of a certain uh, outlook for this one moving forward in the coming days. But for now, there's many question marks, not a lot of answers. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our sea surface temperatures as well as our spaghetti model guidance, including the intensity guidance. We're going to give you guys an El Nino, La Nina update, and then we're going to take a look at our, our graphical weather outlook here from Direct Weather. And then we're basically going to get into our comment of the day and close this one up. All right, now here we are taking a look at the sea surface temperatures, and this is basically the one thing that this storm does have going for it, is that it is moving into warmer than normal conditions as far as sea surface temperatures, far above normal sea surface temperatures, that is. And that's going to help this one develop quite rapidly if it is able to develop, uh, which again raises even another question mark. Uh, this one could develop quite nicely. Especially if it gets past that area of dry air and shear, there is a quite favorable area to the west and north of that. If it does get through it in one piece, I could see this one redeveloping actually quite easily. So that's going to be something we're going to need to worry about later, obviously. Here's our spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, the, there's a few models that have hopped onto this one. The majority seem to think it's going to be heading basically right towards Puerto Rico. So I would say there's a middle ground there. Uh, but there is a few that take it south of Puerto Rico. There is a few that take it north of Puerto Rico. And just like we saw with Isaias and Gonzalo, that plays a major role in if this storm is going to be able to develop or not. Gonzalo went to the south of Puerto Rico. Gonzalo died. Isaias went to the north of Puerto Rico. And Isaias developed into a hurricane. That's the difference. There's much more favorable conditions there to the north of Cuba, and if it goes north of Puerto Rico, it's heading in that direction. If it goes south of Puerto Rico, there's not very favorable conditions whatsoever, and it would probably get eaten up, actually. Uh, so that's a huge, huge role in what this storm does. Now, looking at our GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model, you can see that actually all of these have it going north of Puerto Rico. So if the, if the ensemble model here is correct, uh, we could see this one develop quite far, actually. Uh, and a lot of these storms have it being a fish storm, which we call it that because it's out to sea, far out to sea, but heading directly for Bermuda. Uh, so as of right now, not a lot of models think this is a United States threat. They think this is a very offshore threat, actually, possibly even for Bermuda. But this one could develop into a tropical storm or hurricane later on, uh, which obviously plays a, a key role in our Atlantic hurricane season uh, as far as how many storms we've had, things like that. So this storm does is actually quite an important one. And then here's the Canadian ensemble model, which is all over the place. But again, this one shows a fish storm as well, with a few members actually having it head towards the eastern United States. Uh, but I don't know how likely that is with, at this point, given our current surface pattern that we're in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the intensity guidance, our Nino 3.4 index, which is going to tell us about our La Nina developing. And then we're going to take a look at our graphical outlook here from direct weather. All right, so here's that intensity guidance. As you can see, there is actually a few models that have this one developing into a tropical storm, even one showing it be a Category 1 hurricane. Uh, but a majority have this one staying under tropical storm status. Probably they're seeing all that shear and dry air we talked about earlier, and they're basically thinking it's not going to have what it takes to get through there. Uh, and I, I quite agree, actually. I think this one is going to have a very tough time developing, and I think the likelihood of this one surviving all of that stuff is quite low at this point. We're really going to have to watch it closely because... If it does happen to survive, that's obviously a bad sign that this storm is a fighter and it's going to have an easy time developing probably. Uh, and also it would be heading towards either Bermuda or anywhere in between or the eastern United States, uh, which obviously would potentially pose a threat for the United States. But at this point, that seems unlikely as well. Uh, a lot of question marks with this one. I will be making future videos on this one unless it dissipates soon. So really, really stay tuned for that. Here's our Nino 3.4 index. I just wanted to throw this in there. It's still lowering. The last time we take, took a look at our hurricane season in an update a few days ago, uh, we were uh, at about 0 0.4 degrees. Now we're at 0 0.463. So we're approaching 0 0.5 degrees below normal there for our Nino 3.4, which would put us pretty much at a weak La Nina status. This one is developing quite 
rapidly into a La Nina, which is bad news for our hurricane season as La Ninas usually lower the shear in the in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So we might see that shear start to lower and lower, which is kind of our defense right now for these storms that are coming towards the United States. If that gets lowered, uh, look out. We might have more problems moving forward. Now here's our graphical tropical weather outlook here from Direct Weather. And basically, it's heading westward. We don't really know. Uh, once it's towards the end of this five-day outlook here, which is on the, obviously the very western edge and the very end of our cone there, that's when it's going to really start to begin running into some issues. So it's probably, if it wants to survive, it's probably going to have to develop quite far before it reaches those issues. If it's not a tropical storm by the time it's running into those the shear, the dry air, uh, it'll probably dissipate. But if it's a tropical storm, even it, some models have trended at being pretty close to a hurricane, it would have a chance of surviving through these, at which time it would possibly pose a threat for Bermuda, the United States. There's still the chance it goes south of Puerto Rico, too, so it could eventually pose a threat to the Gulf. Really, anything is on limits now, uh, but the odds are, as of right now, that it, this one is going to dissipate with all of these challenges it's going to face. It's not moving towards favorable conditions, actually quite the contrary, so we're going to need to watch it closely, but it seems like it's going to have a tough time developing. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, Sentry said, well... I better give you some context. In yesterday's video, we talked about an upcoming cooldown, and I asked you guys how this summer has been so far for your area. Century said way warmer than normal in Texas, and I picked this one because every single year around August, September time frame, I get a ton of people from Texas complaining about the heat. So I feel really bad for you. I know many, many of you are feeling very hot conditions, uh, and it's, it's very bad. Okay, I get comments like this, hundreds of comments like this every single year from people from Texas, uh, and it makes me really never want to move there. So I hope that some cooler air moves into your area and you get a nice cool down. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, we've added a few more names. If you would like to be a part of this and support the channel, you can check it out in the description or the pinned comment. Also, shout out to Mark J, our diamond patron. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.